Hi, today I'm going to be talking about hormesis. I'll start by defining it. So hormesis in, in plain English means uh, that something dangerous is good for you in small doses. Something that follows this pattern here. Uh, there's, there's a lot of different examples of hormesis. Probably the most commonly uh, known one is exercise. When you exercise, you do a small amount of, of damage to your muscles, uh, micro tears and the muscle fibers and so on, and your body responds by making your muscles stronger. That one is fairly widely known. In 1888, a German man by the name of Hugo Schultz found that he could uh, promote yeast growth by administering small amounts of poison. Why he wanted to do that, I am not sure, but there, there are a lot of other examples, though, of hormesis that are, that are less obvious. One of them, for example, that I've talked about in, in, in other videos is, is, is fasting. Uh, and that certainly follows the curve that we were looking at. In, in small doses, it's, it's actually really pretty, pretty good for you. Um, you go through an autophagy process where your body gets rid of dead or dying cells. Um, you get rid of white blood cells that have already served their purpose and you replace them with new ones. You generate a lot of stem cells. I talk about all this in other videos, but but in a large dose, I mean, in carried to an extreme, fasting would be, would be deadly. Uh, eating vegetables is another counterintuitive one. So plants throughout history have been engaged in somewhat of an arms race with animals. Deer like almost all the plants in your garden and will eat them down to the ground. So if, if a plant has beneficial properties, animals will eat it. Plants don't want to be eaten, so they evolve toxic properties. Thistles, for example. Why, why do thistles have to be sharp and pointy? Well, because they're good to eat, that's why. If they weren't, if they didn't have beneficial properties, they wouldn't have had to evolve protection. Uh, but, but vegetables fall into the same category. They've, they've evolved microtoxins that, to discourage animals and insects from eating them. And those microdoses of toxic properties are actually what make them good for humans. You eat them and it, it triggers a, a mild uh, response that's similar to a workout for your cells. It imposes a small amount of damage and they respond by being stronger. That's why eating vegetables makes you healthier. Uh, hypoxia is another example. Hypoxia is an oxygen shortage. Clearly, an oxygen shortage over an extended period of time would be bad for you, but in short doses, it, it's beneficial. So for example, if you're climbing a mountain, the, the way you train is you go to a higher elevation and then come down. And uh, what happens is when you go to a higher elevation, uh, it exposes you to low levels of oxygen, and so in response, your body produces more hemoglobin. Uh, in the summer, if I'm planning to take kids or people who are inexperienced at hiking up to a high elevation, on a high elevation hike, um, I'll try to take them on a, on a lower elevation hike the week before. Uh, even, if you, even if you just drive to the top of the mountain, exposing them to low levels of oxygen makes them much better prepared for a hike a week later. If you go hiking two weeks in a row, uh, the second time you go is noticeably easier than the first time because you've adapted during that week. Sunlight is perhaps a less obvious one. Here's, here's an interesting headline. Is sunscreen the new, new margarine? Margarine was supposed to be a healthy alternative to butter in the same way that sunscreen protects you from the, uh, the sun's harmful rays. Well, turns out we actually need the sun's rays. Um, for a lot of reasons, you know, we create vitamin D and, and so on, but here's a perhaps less, less well-known one. Uh, melanin, that's the chemical that makes your skin dark, involves cholesterol. So uh, exposing your skin to, to sun actually depletes your cholesterol supply because it's being used to make melanin. Northern climates, Boston, uh, New York, etc. Uh, people with darker skin have much higher cholesterol rates in those cities than they do closer to the equator. Why? Well, because they're not out in the sun as much, which has led to some doctors actually prescribing tanning beds for dark-skinned people 
in order to get their cholesterol levels down. Cold also has hormetic properties. A brief exposure to cold uh, helps you sleep better, helps you recover. There are some scientists who, who think that the reason we have to exercise now when we used to not have to exercise is because we used to get the, the same benefits from shivering or from being in the cold. At the other end of the spectrum you had saunas. Saunas have repeatedly been shown to be beneficial for, uh, for your cardiovascular health. I don't know if it was Sweden, Norway, Finland, it was one of the northern countries where, where saunas are, are fairly common. But they did a, they did a study. They had the, the control group, which is people who you know, took regular saunas, and they had the test group, which is people who stopped taking saunas. And after a fairly short amount of time, they discontinued the study because the, the rate of heart attacks in the test group went up by such a margin that they considered it unethical for the testing to proceed. So saunas have some, some benefits. However, how much sauna is too much? How much is just the right amount? Peter Atia, a scientist who specializes in, in longevity, has said that things such as, as fasting, heat, cold, um, and, and so on, are, are known to be among the most beneficial things we can do for ourselves. However, he points out, we don't know what the right dosage is. We don't know where we hit the sweet spot on that curve. I suspect that we've gone too far. We've made too much of an effort to stay comfortable, that we try to stay warm. We, we try not to get too hot. We try not to get too cold. We try not to get hungry. We try to avoid these stresses. We've discovered exercise. We've made progress there. We shelter ourselves from the sun. We wear sunscreen. We're no longer exposing ourselves to the, the hormetic stress that our ancestors had. As a result, the average weight in America is, is 20 pounds heavier, 20 pounds heavier than it was in the 1980s and 1990s. That concept is, is actually the reason behind the, the whole modern day Sparta uh, channel name. That perhaps there's some benefit from exposing ourselves to these hardships that our ancestors were familiar with. Click like, click subscribe. See you next time.